Honorable Chairperson, Sir, I rise today on behalf of my party, the All India Trinamool Congress, to speak on the Women's Reservation, the Nari Vandan Bill. At the very onset, let us remind ourselves that this is India, a country with the poet Kefri Azmi in 1940, 81 years ago, 82 years ago, before independence, wrote in his poem, Aurat, Ut meri jaan, mere saath hi chalna hai tujhe. Jannat ek aur hai, jo mart ke pehlu mein nahi, uski azad ravish par bhi macharna hai tujhe. Ban ke tufaan, chalakna hai, ubarna hai tujhe. Ut meri jaan, mere saath hi chalna hai tujhe. This is in India, where Tagore in 1928 wrote in his poem, Shabula, Nari ke apun bhaggo joy kori bar, kano na hi dibe odhikar, he bidhata. Oh Lord, why will you not give women the right to determine their own destiny? This is in India, where in 1946, when the Constituent Assembly was elected, 15 seats went to women who helped to draft the Constitution. Both the United States and the United Kingdom saw lengthy suffragette movements before women were granted the right to vote. India's founders in 1947, April, agreed to the principle of universal adult suffrage, giving simultaneously the right to vote to women and to men. There was never any question of denying women the right to vote while giving it to men. All 15 members of the Constituent Assembly who were women rejected the demand for any special women's reservation on July 18, 1947. Member activist Renuka Roy noted that Vijayalakshmi Pandit has not been selected because she is a woman, nor was sex made a bar to the appointment. It is her proven worth that has been responsible for her appointment to the high office of ambassador to a land. The demand for special reservation is an insult to our intelligence and to our capacity. So sure were our founding mothers that this great land would not deny her women her, their rightful place based on merit. But alas, it is 75 years later. And today it is both my pride and my shame that I stand here as a woman in India's parliament speaking on a women's reservation bill. It is my pride that I belong to the All India Trinamool Congress, a party that sends 37% women among its members to parliament. It is my chagrin that I belong to a Lok Sabha, a house of the people, that on aggregate has only 15% of its members as women, far below the global average of 26.5% and also below the Asian regional average of 21%. As this government caps itself on its back for its rankings on various global stables, let it also hang its head in disgrace that this same India ranks 140 out of 196 countries in the Interparliamentary Union League tables on women's representation. Within women parliamentarians, Muslims and Dalits have been consistently underrepresented. From 1952 to 2004, only eight Muslim women were elected to India's parliament, to the Lok Sabha, many of whom served multiple terms. In today's Lok Sabha, the 17th Lok Sabha, there are only two Muslim women members, both from West Bengal, both from the All India Trinamool Congress, I may add. The numbers for male and female turnout in the last general election were nearly the same, 66.7% and 66.8% respectively. But women's candidature, as it, that number of women who are being put up for elections, which is the first step towards getting elected to the Lok Sabha, remained at an abysmal 9%, up from only 7% in 2004. As we started our innings yesterday, our new innings in this newly constructed temple of democracy, our Honorable Prime Minister grandly proclaimed that it seemed he was ordained to perform many important tasks for this country, including this one. And then with much fanfare, this government introduced this bill, claiming credit as usual for a groundbreaking move. But wait, what does this bill really say? Article 334 of the bill says, the reservation shall come into effect only after delimitation has been undertaken. Delimitation will only be undertaken after the relevant figures for the next census have been published. The rotation of seats for women shall take effect after each subsequent exercise of delimitation. So what does this mean? In true BJP's Gebelsian doublespeak style, it means we don't know if and actually when we will actually have 33% of women sitting in the Lok Sabha. Yeah, yeah. Because number one, the date of the next census in, is entirely indeterminate. 
Because of this, number two, the date of the next delimitation exercise is therefore doubly indeterminate. It is also controversial, as my esteemed colleague uh, uh, Kani Mozi from the DMK spoke. She said, she said, according to the data, we will have an increase of 0% in the number of seats for Kerala, 26% for Tamil Nadu, but a whopping 26%, a 79% increase for both Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. So women's reservation is dependent on two totally indeterminate dates. Can there be a greater Jumla? Forget 2024. This may not even be possible in 2029. We are being asked time and again, do we support the women's reservation bill? Trinamool Congress is bill ko support karega ya nahi? BJP's liaison members are reaching out to us, calling us, asking us to support this bill wholeheartedly. No ifs, no buts, pura support, please kijiye. To them we say very clearly, we not only support a women's reservation bill, but in truth it is Mamata Banerjee, India's only chief female chief minister today, who is the mother of this bill. Who has given birth to the original idea where she has unconditionally sent 37% of women MPs to this parliament on her ticket? What you have brought here, what this government has brought here today is not a women's reservation bill. It is a women's reservation rescheduling bill and should be renamed as such. Its agenda is delay. Its agenda is not reservation. The endless dithering over when there will be the next census, when there will be the next delimitation, will only ensure that the urgent need of reservation for women in elections to the parliament and to state legislatures will be indefinitely delayed yet again. Alas, this is not the historic bill that it is being touted as. It is a sham. And for the women and the men and the girls and the boys who will be the future women and men of India, we had better recognize this, recognize this because it is staring at us in the face. And I also hope that a sufficient number of amongst us, the current members of parliament, also recognize this bill for what it is, which is a sham. The question of women's reservation requires action, not the placebo of legislatively mandated procrastination. To the government and the ruling party, I say this. Give us this day our equal rights. We hold up half the sky. Give us at least a third of our earth. Mamata Banerjee and the Trinamool Congress have already walked the talk. We don't need to go on record to show this country that we support this bill. We have already sent more MPs than what this bill even envisions. It is you, this government, this ruling dispensation that needs to go on record. You need to support us, not the other way around. You need to send more than 33% MPs to this parliament. When this government wanted to protect cows, and I support the move, make no mistake, you did not wait to count the number of cows. You did not wait to see whether the cow was a jersey or a gear or a sahiwal. You just went and built the cow shelters. Are we women any less that we have to wait while you count numbers and you draw lines? We don't need any more vandans. We don't need any more vandanas. Thank you very much. What we need is direct action. Honorable Prime Minister, this is your moment to really show us all ki Modi hai to mumkin hai. Implement the reservation bill immediately based on today's voters list. Send 33% women to parliament. Send 33% women to parliament in 2024 from the BJP the way our party has done. Support us unreservedly. In conclusion, I can only echo the poet Rihanna Ruhi's words. Dil ke bahlane ka saman na samjha jaye. Hamko ab itna bhi asan na samjha jaye. Hum bhi logo ki tarah jine ka haq mangte hai. Isko bagawat ka elan na samjha jaye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Srimati, Srimati Rani ji. Adhyaksh Mahade. Aaj. Is sabhagar mein.